Hi everyone, Stephanie from Always in Stitches, Noblesville, Indiana. Hope you're having a great day. We've got a sunshiny day going on here and we're gonna do a little video on the Skyline 6. This is like the middle of the uh, Skyline series. So it's, a, it's got nice features, but it doesn't have as many as the more you go up, the more features you get. So we're just gonna do a little video on this one. <clears throat> I like to start with just going over the basics. This is a start-stop button, which you can use to sew, or you can use the actual foot. When the foot is plugged in, the start-stop won't work. So, your option, we've all become accustomed of, to using the start-stop uh, button. Uh, it just seems to be a lot more convenient for us. So, after that, we have a reverse button, a locking stitch, needle up, needle down, and what everybody wants, the button to cut your thread. Then we have a speed governor, and then this is the uh, face of the machine with all the different parts, that different things that it can do. So we're gonna start with basic winding the bobbin and threading the machine. So we'll start with the bobbin. I've got an empty bobbin here, and do you know me bottom, bobbins have a little J on them, I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're plastic bobbin and you need to use Janome bobbins uh, or your machine might not operate properly. It's the right size, everything is geared towards this bobbin, so you'll need to use a Janome bobbin. So that goes right there. And then we will put the thread on the spool here, put a, a thread, holder on, spool cap. Then you want to follow the guideline here. One, two, three. One, two. There we go, three. You want to take an extra second here and kind of floss that thread in there. This is where your tension is, and you want to kind of floss it in there to make sure you have a good tension on your thread before you start. What happens if there's not tension on the thread and you wind the bobbin? Then the bobbin is going to wind really loose and wonky. It's going to be full on one end and narrow in the other, and it's not going to lay flat on top of each other, so you'll have a terrible stitch. So this machine is made with this little, this little piece down here that has blades in it. So it, you should wrap it around two or three times clockwise. And then take it under one of these little blades and it will cut your thread. Push it to the left, or the right, I'm sorry. And if you notice here on the front screen, the bobbin is highlighted because that means now it's not gonna sew it's gonna just do the bobbin. So I'm gonna turn it up as fast as it will go, hit my start stop, and wind my bobbin. I'm not gonna fill it up because I already have a bobbin in the machine, but I just wanted to show you how to do it. It will automatically shut itself off once it gets full. So I'm gonna stop it now. And, and um, right behind the bobbin winder is another little blade where you can cut your th bobbin thread. So. That's as easy as it is to wind a bobbin here on the Skyline 6. Now we're going to thread the machine. So again, there's another path for your threading, threading the machine. One, two, and then three is down here, and it has a little arrow that has you go back up. This is four right here, Then I'm going to sit back down. You'll want to get the thread behind this guide, behind this guide, there's two here, and if you look at this piece right here, it kind of looks like it's got a little wedge in it. You'll want to make sure your thread goes into that triangle and up over this number seven. Then take it over to the left, cut your thread, lower your foot, and your thread, and your needle is bob, uh, your <laughs> needle's threaded. See how it made a little loop? So just take your loop, pull it out, and you've got your needle threaded. Now if you want to bring your uh, bobbin tension up, or your bobbin thread up, you can do that as well, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. 
this button right here releases your uh, throat plate. So no more d fiddling with those little bitty screws. You can just push the button and it will um, release this and you can change your throat plate out. This machine comes with two, one for decorative zigzag stitches, one for straight stitching. When the straight stitch uh, needle plate is on, none of your decorative stitches will be available to, uh, it won't, they won't, they'll be blocked out. You can't stitch them. So once your bobbin is full, you wanna pull your thread off to the left, kinda of like a P, drop it in, then this little, this little lever right here is what you want to make sure your thread goes under. I'm going to do it again. See, see this little lever right here? You want to make sure your thread goes under that to be uh, tensioned in uh, the bobbin area. Now you can bring your bobbin thread up, but just do your needle up, needle down, and that will pull your bobbin thread up. I've got it kind of locked there because I closed it in, but we'll get it. Kind of caught Oops. under the foot. Kind of caught under the foot. There under we go. Under the plate. Under the throat plate, yeah. You know, you do these things every day and if you don't it think about it. happens to us, it'll happen to you guys. Yes. <laughs> there we go. That's how easy it is to change your throw plate, how easy it is to wind your bobbin and thread your machine. I think Janome is one of the easiest ones to thread. Um, not a whole lot of complications, and it's, it's, it's numbered out, one, two, three, four, five. So um, you shouldn't have any trouble with that. So now that is threading and the bobbin, threading the machine, and what this um, does here, the, or what your functions are. <clears throat> so now we're gonna go to the different modes. This machine has um, six modes. It starts out with mode one, which is all of your utility type stitches. All of these right here are in mode one. So if you wanted to do 87 in mode one, you just key in 87 and that stitch will appear. Mode two, these are all the, of your decorative stitches. Mode three starts your alphabet. Four and five are both alphabets. Um, I, I can't really tell you what they are. I can't remember, because um, I, don't, I don't use them, but it's in the book if you need to know what those are. And then mode six is um, the third alphabet, and it is um, nine millimeter wide. Mode three is a little smaller. It's a seven millimeter alphabet and it has upper and lower case where mode six just has upper case, but it's, but it's a full nine millimeter wide. This machine is a nine millimeter machine, but on the, for this part of the alphabet on mode three, it's only a seven millimeter width. So um, that's what's here. Now on the front of the screen, to get to your different modes, you just hit the mode button. Now it's taken me to mode two. Now I'm at mode three. Mode three right here, the very first stitch is. How do you know you're on mode three on the digital display? Right here, this little, this little number comes up. Oh, okay, I see it. And then mode four starts oh, gotcha. with this alphabet. Mode five and mode six. So mode one is where you spend most of your time. And that's where these stitches are. And then, so that's what, that's how you get to the different modes. This would be how you would turn the, turn, once you get to uh, a page that you need to turn, this is where you would turn the page and go to the next page. This is a locking stitch if you want to have it, if you want to have your stitches cut at the end, when you use the locking stitch, you would turn this on, and when you get to the end and you hit the locking stitch, it will cut the thread for you. This is your... Uh, stitch width and your stitch length to increase this to all the way up to the nine millimeter if you can because that's how big it goes Wow 
<laughs> it took a minute. That's a nice there are wide 90, stitch. There are 91 stitch positions, so you can put that needle where you want it. It doesn't have to be what the machine is pre-programmed to do. They're set for the for the different stitches here. They're, all of these are preset, but you can move that needle physically to wherever you want it to go. I'm going to go back to 4.5, which is the middle of the throat plate. And then, of course, this is your stitch length. So if you want to do a gathering stitch, you'll want to make that bigger. If you want to, if you're quilting, you might want to make it smaller. So that's where you can control that. These right here are built-in jump stitches. So instead of going to your screen here or going to this um, template here, you can jump right to a um, reverse button or a stretch button or a zigzag button or a buttonhole. All of those are just kind of preset. You can go to each one of them by finding this, the number. Let's go to a button. Number 28 in mode one, which is what this is saying it is. So that's the preset one. Or you can actually just punch in 28 and it will take you to that. And of course, when it does that, it, it lights up what you need to do or what you need to use to make that stitch. You've got, this is your R foot. And this little lever here is showing that you, there's a lever that you need to pull down when you make a stitch, when you make a buttonhole to know, so that it will know where to stop. So that's what that's telling you, and then of course it's gonna cut the thread when it's at the end. So these are all ones that you can just jump to if you know you wanna do a quick buttonhole without having to go through the process of finding it on the screen. This, now, now these are your, your um, the numbers where you can jump right to a, a design. This is an elongated um, stitch in mode one. You have about 10 stitches here that can be made longer and you can make them up to five times longer. So all of these 87 through 98 can be adjusted to make longer. Um, and you can put it in memory so you can do like one, one bigger, two bigger, three bigger, four bigger, and then go back the other way to make kind of an extra decorative design. But we'll, we'll stitch that out in just a minute. And this is for twin needles. So if you're doing some kind of a garment or top stitching something, then you can use twin needles. That's what that will do for you. This button here is your mirror image. So the design that's displayed can be mirror image to go the other, the other direction. This is the set key. On this machine, there's only a few things that you can set. This is where you want to start back at the beginning. If you programmed in a series of stitches and you want to start from the beginning, you press that button and it will take you back right to where, where the first one that you programmed in. And then this is a lock. This will lock your machine. So let's go to the settings. Unlock it. Go to settings. Okay, this is um, this is the noise that the machine makes when you're doing different things. You can turn that off or you can turn it on. Whatever's blinking is what's going to happen. So now I've got it turned off. Uh, hit the mode button to go to the next option, and this is needle up, needle down. Do you want to start with your needle or stop every time with your needle down? You can do that, or if you don't, you can make it where it, where it, go, it stops with the needle up. This is the speed that the machine starts at. You can program this machine to start really slow and then take off to whatever setting you have it, or you can go to a medium or to a, to go the speed you want right away with this with this mode with this option. This is if your machine gets out of calibration. You would tap on this and then it will it will light up the different buttons that you need to push to recalibrate your. Um, screen here and what that means is if you pick say stitch number 76 and it doesn't show up here an image of that um, screen let me go to I can't I can't do what I wanted to do anyway if it doesn't go to that you'll want to recalibrate your screen and in the book it shows you where to, there's different spots here on the screen that you touch and it will recalibrate the screen to to, um, to that to the right location I've never had to use it. I don't think it comes up very often, but that's what it, that's what it is. If you need to do, if, if you push it, 
push a stitch and it doesn't show up, that's, that means it's out of calibration. Then the next one is clear, to clear what you've done. And then that's all of them. Uh, I, I forget how to turn that off. Was it settings button? Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back up here to stitch one. No. And take that off. Okay, so now we're at now we're at the beginning of the utility stitches. This is going to be where your straight stitches are. Stitch one is just a regular straight stitch, 4.5 right down the middle of the throat plate. Two is one where it will stitch four stitches forward and four stitches backwards. So I'm going to stitch that one out just so you can see what it looks like. So I need to go to stitch two. And it's telling me that I am using um, the A foot I did something wrong. Oops, boo-boo. Cut my thread and start over. I played with this machine for a minute or two and I didn't have any trouble. So now let me see, oh, I know what I did. I didn't hit zero two. Aha, now zero two takes me to that stitch. And if you see how that stitch is formed, this is showing where it's gonna go back a few stitches and forward a few stitches. So now it's going to be right, and I'm slowing it down a little bit because I had it on full speed. So it's going to do about four forward, then four back, and then we'll complete the stitch. If you hit the uh, stop button, it's going to stop. If you hit the reverse button, it will go back four and then stitch four. Cut my thread, raise my foot, and that's what that um, stitch will do. Three is just like that, only instead of going back, it stitches it in the same spot. See there? It's going in the same spot. And then if I hit the reverse button, it's going to hit uh, four stitches in the same spot again. And then cut. So, number four moves it to the left. Number five is... Um, do number five. I I don't I didn't catch what number five is, so I apologize for that. But it doesn't look like it's much different. And we'll pull the book out here in a minute and we'll see exactly what number five does. Number six is your quarter inch foot. And if you heard that noise, it meant that it moved the foot over, or the needle over, I mean. And of course, the way that these feet go on and off is you just push this little black button back here. I don't know if Peter can get a good view of that. Let's zoom in here. Okay. And that, pop, that drops that off. And we're gonna put the quarter inch foot on. It's your O foot. And now it's set at a quarter inch. So if you line your um, garment or your fabric up to the edge of the, uh, at the edge of the fabric, you're gonna get a quarter inch stitch. So that's what number six does. Number seven gives you like a three quarter inch stitch. So it's not gonna look a whole lot different. It's gonna be one or two thread count threads over from the quarter. You see, that's the difference between a quarter inch and um, three quarter inch. So your mo needle moved from eight point, oops, on stitch number seven. 
your needle moved from 8.3, which is your quarter inch, to 7.7. .7. So it, it moved it in just a little bit so you have a little bit um, bigger seam on this one. Then the next ones go through, um, if you look at the screen here, we'll go through number eight and number nine. It's going to move forward backwards to do kind of a stretch stitch. Number 10 is the same vein, and the M stands for the needle will be in the middle of the foot. The L means it will be in the left side, and the R means it will be in the right side. So let's take this quarter inch foot back off and put our standard A foot on and stitch, um, let's do stitch number 13. Now we've got zigzag stitch. And I'm running this pretty slow. You can speed it up. Doesn't work real well on this kind of a plastic surface table. Not the sturdiest um, one to demo on, but that's what we have, so that's what we use. So that is your standard zigzag stitch. If you wanted to make that bigger, let's put it down and do a bigger one. That's where you would adjust the um, length. It will go up to five millimeters. So you can make a, a wider and you can tighten it up if you want it tighter. That's where you would play with, with um, to make it as, as, make it the way the, that you want it to look. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the feet on the machine. We just did the O foot, which is your quarter inch seam. And now I'm gonna use the F foot. This machine comes with the F foot. And the F foot is very similar to the A foot in that it's got an opening here for straight stitch or for zigzag. Either one of these will work with decorative stitches. The difference in is the way that they're designed. This one is designed more to go uh, forward and backward and move as the stitch is being formed, where this one is made with these little lines in here to help you keep the stitches straight. So either one, you can use either one. The machine always tells you which um, foot to use, but that's the difference between the two. So we're gonna put the F foot on and go to a decorative stitch. And Get a clean piece of fabric here. Okay, so let's go to mode two. And let's do, let's say we wanna do number six. See, it's telling me this is what the stitch looks like. It's, this is gonna stitch out the full nine millimeter width, five um, uh, millimeters long, and it tells me to use the F foot. See how the uh, fabric is moving back and forth, the feed dogs are moving it back and forth. That's why that smooth bottom helps create the stitches. That's a pretty stitch. So that's the decorative stitches and that's when you would use the F foot. So, and we've done the A foot and we've done the O foot. Let's go to, um, let's go to the F over edge. This one creates a stitch similar to a um, serger stitch. And this is in mode one. I'm going to go back to mode one. And I always have to play a little bit to get to the right one. I believe it is stitch number 20. Yeah, yay, I got it on the first time. This is um, F or M foot. If you see that on the, on the machine there, that's M foot, and it's telling me that's the foot to use. There's just a few stitches that calls for this foot, so I have to play around a little bit to make sure I've got the right one. So what this is going to do is going to give you an over edge, kind of like, like I said, kind of like a serger. So you just line it up here with the edge of the foot. And you 
take your take your uh, garment off or your fabric off. You want to pull it to the back. See how that makes a nice over edge foot or over edge stitch. Well, I'm going to show you why you want to pull it to the back. These wires that that needle goes in between to form the stitch. Over the cloth. Yeah. So the wires here that help form the needle are loose. They're not attached. So when you take it off, you want to pull your fabric to the back so that you don't bend these wires. But that's kind of a nice um, foot to have just on a regular sewing machine. This foot here is for blind hems. And I don't know why I have such trouble with doing a blind hem, but I do. So I'm gonna do my best to demo it to you. That would be stitch number 25, I believe. Nope. 23. Once again, this is this foot is the G foot, and it's right in there that you can see it. And it's got a little guide here to help um, make your blind hem. I'm not, I don't do a whole lot with garments, so it's a little difficult for me to always to remember exactly how you fold it. Again, the Janome manual is wonderful. It will show you exactly how to fold your fabric in order to form the blind, um, the blind hem. So what you want to do is something similar to what I've got here. Like this is this would be your uh, this fold here would be the bottom of your pants. So this would be the top of your pants, or whatever you're hemming. And you want to butt it right up against the um, the crease that you make when you're doing it. And what this should do when you have it set correctly. Just make a little nibble into the folded area. Like this. And then when it's this side, if I had red thread, wouldn't see it. it you wouldn't see it. But I'm still just a little bit, need to be just a little bit, um, that's a little big. So I always have to play around with it. And I suggest that you do that on any time that you... Go to do a different stitch that you haven't done on a regular basis. Do it on a little piece of scrap fabric first so that you get down the, the details that you need to make it um, turn out the way you want it to turn out. This was red thread. It wouldn't be bad, but I would like it to have just a little bit less of a nibble on that part. So that is the G foot. We never do a demo on the zipper foot, but this is the zipper foot. It's got it for the left side and the right side. Um, so that's that's what that's what you use. They do make a, a invisible zipper foot that comes that doesn't come with the machine, but you can use that as well um, if you like if you're using in, invisible zippers. So the next one I'm going to do is the um, rolled hem. We had a question on this foot yesterday from a customer that was trying to do a rolled hem. And so I did some videos and I found what I think works best for the rolled hem. A couple different methods you can do, but this method is the one that I found that I like the best. So what I did before we started was I took a piece of fabric and I folded it under a quarter and under a quarter. So I've got this pressed and ready. And now to use the rolled hem, what you really want, what you want to do is take a few straight stitches. Make sure you have um, some thread, extra thread, and then reverse. Stop. Cut it. Have, have your thread. Get a hold, get it, um, put it back down. Or put put your the ironed part into. Oh, for this one, we need the knee lift. This is part of this machine. It fits into this hole right here, and what it does is it raises and lowers the the ankle. So I need to raise this ankle with this foot so that I can get this into that groove. First I need to put the needle down. Now let's get that in there. 
I did this up front just a minute ago. Well, doggone it. I won't give up. I won't give up. There we go. Now I've got it in there. Again, this is another one that you, if you want to do a nice rolled hem, you'll want to play a little bit with it and, and get your technique down. Practice, practice, practice. Now that I've made my little hem, all I have to do is kind of hold on to that and uh, keep it feeding it into the foot. And I have a nice rolled hem. It's a little difficult on this foot, on the one that comes with the machine, because this is a two millimeter. We sell a three, a four millimeter and a six millimeter, which just gives you more room to form that curve and make a make your rolled hem a little nicer. This anytime is really I've, small. Anytime I've done a dress shirt, and mine, I and I use the two. I mean, it is just so minuscule that it always leaves me wanting the four or a six something a little bit wider a little bit more custom looking yeah well it just it's just a little more difficult the but machine... that was before i knew that we carried the four and the six <laughs> <laughs> it's great that the machine comes with it but um you know you are limited a little bit it is a little bit more work than it is when with the bigger ones so now we're going to do a button and a buttonhole so this is our button foot. It's the P foot. There's a P, or no, it's an R foot, sorry. There's an R foot right there. We're gonna go to number 28. And if you remember, I could have jumped, let me go back to one. I could have jumped right there to number 28. Now, like I said before, it, it's got a couple symbols here. So the R means that's the foot that we're using. And this little thing here means that we need to pull this lever down. Because the way the buttonhole is made, it, it bumps between these two points. And when the button is formed, um, it, when it hits these, it knows it's supposed to stop and go the other side. So I've got a button here today. Last time I did one of these, I forgot a button. So I'll just put it in here. Whoops. Put it in the wrong spot. Put it here, tighten it up so that it fits in there. And this lever right here, L and S, if you need it longer or if you need it shorter, you can adjust it a little bit after you've made your button. You see how that's moving, moving towards the longer and moving back towards the shorter. I'm gonna put it right in the middle where, where if, as if I'd made this and it was the right spot. This one also attaches just like the rest of them. Snaps in. And now I'm gonna, I like to use at least two thicknesses here. So if you were making something and you had a buttonhole or a button in it, you would want to make sure that you, um, you'd want to make sure that you had your, have had it marked so you know where to start and stop. I'm not, I'm not worried about that on this. I just want to get a hold of my thread. Now, put my foot down, and this should make this stitch, and it should make it the size of that buttonhole. Oh, see what happened? Look, it's in the front of it instead of between them. So when I attached it, I didn't get it at the right spot. So. The machine won't let it do it, won't let it go if it's not right. Now it's not sensing it. So we're just going to start over.
I had it in front of this instead of behind it. So let's see what it's going to do now. I'm going to make like a stay, uh, stay stitch and come down and do the satin stitch. When it bumps this, it knows it needs to go to the other side and make the right side of the, of the buttonhole. So, made a nice little buttonhole. Now, along with the fact that this has a, you can do a buttonhole, I'm going to do a button. And the button stitch is 38. I'm going to sew a button down, 38. This is what that foot looks like, it's a T foot. And it snaps on here and here. So it snaps on your foot in two different places. You want to do the back and then then lower it down and snap the front on. Now I'm going to take this button and do a button hole. This is what I do every time I do a button is I do the first couple of stitches manually. And then I hit the um, hit the button to let it stitch it. Oh, see what it's telling me? It's telling me I need to lower my feed dogs. Feed dogs are on the side here. You don't want your you don't want your um, you don't want this to move when we're doing a buttonhole or a button, I mean. So it won't let you do it if you, if the feed dogs are up. So it won't let you make a mistake. So just within a couple of seconds, it sewed that buttonhole. So it made a button, buttonhole, and it, and it sewed the button down. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So the next foot I'm gonna use, this is the darning foot um, slash quilting foot. And that is, um, I might pause for a minute and find out, find what that one is, find exactly what that stitch is, what number it is. So we'll go on to the AccuFeed. Uh, this machine is, comes with the AccuFeed system, which is a little nicer than the, um, um, what's the other one called? Even Feed. Foot. Even Feed. Yeah, this is amazing. This actually connects, this part piece right here, connects to the shaft of the machine. I didn't learn about this foot until I started working here. I thought that the even feed foot is was what you always used. Right. I had no idea of this. Well, this thing's amazing. A lot of people call it walking foot. Well, this well, this foot holds the, the fabrics together. Yeah, the walking foot the is walking what the foot older will, one's called. Mm -hmm. It will push one layer and then the other layer. So it, it goes like where this one holds it together, so if you're working with plaids or something that you want to match up perfectly, that foot is, is great for that. With this foot, we have to take the, the, what I call the ankle of the machine off, where most of the, uh, the uh, feet snap on and off. This one has its own. I have kind of big hands. It takes me a second to get it on. There. Now, as I was as I was screwing this piece on, I was pushing that lever that I showed you in, so it's attached. If you don't push it in, you might not get the same results. I always tighten it a little bit with with the uh, screwdriver after that. And. Let's go to the quilting one. Let's go, we're in mode one, we wanna to go to six. This is your quarter inch quilting. And the reason I wanted to go to a quarter inch because I wanna show you something. I like to use two layers of fabric.
Oh, feed dogs are down. I need to put the feed dog back up. There we go. Maybe I, maybe that wasn't the message. Have my feed dogs up. Feed dogs are up. So let's see what that message was. There we go. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but anyway, now it's working. So you see what it does is it adds, um, it adds extra these extra two um, feed dogs on the top, as well as the seven that are on the bottom of the machine. And uh, um, so it actually holds your fabric together as it's going. It's called AccuFeed. It's not as clunky either. And this comes off. The walking foot is so much more clunkier. Yes, it makes a lot more noise. So this foot will come right off. And I'm going to put the quarter inch foot on it. That's why I chose the quarter inch um, stitch. It'd be a little easier if I like, took it back off. So this foot, these little pegs here, fit into these grooves right here. And you can make your AccuFeed foot a quarter inch with the flange. And there's also an open toe, the toe. there's also a stitch in the ditch. Um, um, currently we are out of stock of those, but they've been on order, so as soon as they come in we'll have them. But this is great for piecing. It will keep your pieces together. Again, as I'm putting this on, I'm pushing that lever into position. Um, I've been doing this a long time, so I automatically do it. I don't even think about it. But I know sometimes people forget that they need to do that. I don't want to take a chance, so I tighten it just a smidge. Now I've got a, a, a guide to go by to make sure I have a quarter inch. While I have that, while I have this um, knee lift on, I'm going to show you what you can pivot. If you're sewing and you come to the end, you can pivot, raise, raise the knee lift, and go the other direction. Some machines come with a button that you can do that with, but if you've got this knee lift, you don't need that. So to the end, stop. Raise it up, sew again. Stop, cut the thread, and there. Perfect corners because I just pivoted to raise it up. So I'm gonna take this one back off. I said, I got big fingers. It's a little bit awkward for me. And um, I'm going to pause for a minute. I'm going to get the book and see exactly where the darning foot, got, what stitch you use with the darning foot. So I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, we're back. So I found it in the book, and this is the darning foot. And the darning foot um, you can also use for free motion. And I'm going to show you the front of the screen because when you're using this foot, you want to take your feed dogs down. To know that your feed dog's down, if you're looking at this screen here, the stitch length is going to turn to zero because you are controlling the length of your stitch when you're doing darning and when you're doing free motion quilting. So if you can't remember if it's up or down, look at your screen and make sure that it's zero if you want the, the uh, feed dogs to be down. This is not a forte of mine, so I don't know how good this is going to look, but we're going to do it, okay? Here we go. It flashed on there, so if you're darning something, you want to go back and forth and back and forth. I just did this recently on my kids' pajamas. My grandkids have a dog, 
and he had made a couple of holes, and I told him I could fix it, but it wouldn't be pretty. So I used the zigzag stitch, but I could have used this. And if you noticed, I was raising the foot up and down to turn it because I'm not used to using the knee lift. When I learned to sew, the knee lift in my singer had made it go. So I forget to use the knee lift. So I'm going to do that now. Oop, get it going. And I don't want to hit the knee lift until I want to raise the foot. So I want to stop, hit the knee lift. Turn it. So I'm guessing that's kind of a darning, um, uh, with kind of what a darning darning would look like. Now, obviously, like I said before, you'd want to practice on some fabric to see um, what it looks like and how to make it look better and, and the best method for you to use. Obviously, you wouldn't use white thread on red fabric. But anyway, that's kind of a sample. And since we have this foot on, I'm going to do a little, try to do just a little bit of free motion. Again, I am creating my stitch length by moving it. So if I go too fast, I'm going to have big stitches, and if I go too slow, I'm going to have slow, smaller stitches. There's a product that we sell that works really well when you do this. It's a super glider, and it fits underneath this so your fabric just slides. And of course, there's gloves and there's little pads that you can hold to move your fabric. Um, that makes it a little bit easier. Um, so this is what you could use for free motion quilting. And if you're really good at that and you have that, you understand and you have that knack down, then you won't have any problem with, uh, with doing it. I'm not, I haven't developed that, you know, to get good at anything you need to practice. And I don't practice that because I don't have to. Um, another thing I wanted to mention about the walking foot, which is great for, for, for quilting is this little guide goes in this hole right here. And then you, if you want to do straight line quilting, do a line and then place this on that line, however far apart you want it, and use this as your guide to do your straight lines um, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So let me put that back on and do that for you before we, before we finish up here. Meantime, look at uh, my table here. Look at this fat quarter and look at this fat quarter. I just wanted to show you something that I absolutely love. We fold our fat quarters and they look like this when you unfold them. And then I took one and sprayed the flatter on it. It is amazing at how well it works to take the wrinkles out. I just sprayed right along my creases. I didn't spray the whole thing. I just sprayed along my creases and then I pressed and those wrinkles come out so nice. It's just, it's a great, great product. Um, hard to start quilting with fabric that's not pressed, especially if, you, if you're doing fat quarters. I'm making a quilt right now using fat quarters, which I don't do real often. And I couldn't cut them straight without um, straightening, without ironing them first. I decided last night to do some bias cut binding, and I was so excited. And every time I get excited about something, I just want to jump right in and do it. Mm -hmm. Well, last time I did it, I I folded the fabric too many times. So I, I had pieces that had like a nice 90 <laughs> degree angle in them. And this time, I figured out, well, there's a certain way you can fold it so it'll fit on your cutting mat. So I was so excited, I took my, you know, my yard and a quarter and, you know, folded it so I could cut it into bias cut bindings. 
and there was a good little crease, you know, where the fold, the fabric was folded on the bolt in half. Mm-hmm. I was like, eh, it'll be fine. I'll press, I'll press the ruler down. I said, and that'll that'll smooth it out. <laughs> so I just cut my strips and cut my strips, and I just zip, 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 zip. And then when I unfolded the fabric, I had this little jog in the edge. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because I was just too excited to get into my fabric and start it cutting doesn't it. doesn't pay to take shortcuts. <laughs> okay, so I've got this uh, foot attached again, and I've got the guide on it, and I'm lining it up to my previous um, spot there. Whoops. Guess what I didn't do? I didn't raise the feed dogs. I'm going to use my pivot, and I'm going to turn and go this way a little bit. I'm going to pivot, maybe. Oh, I didn't go over far enough, but you're, I'm sure that you're getting the idea. Actually, I'm going to raise my needle up and move over to that. There we go. Now I'm going to li line it up with this. So you can do some nice straight line quilting. I love straight line quilting because it's just um, a little more modern. And I like, I like to do the modern things. I saw a quilt a customer brought in. They used the AccuFeed foot or the even feed foot or walking foot, mm -hmm. however you want to call it. Not sure exactly which one she had, but she had one of those feet. And she did waves. And waves. it looked so, yeah, she she turned it. Like, okay. as she did it, just kind of did waves. And it was really cool. Yeah. So you can see here how I, I just kind of lined it up with one of the previous stitches to make my line straight. So this is a great way to, um, to do straight line piecing. And you can move this to the other side, or you can move it way out if you want wider. You're, you're kind of got control of this. So that pretty much is the Skyline 6, one of the Skyline series. Um, be sure to give us a call if you've got any questions about the machine or if you own this machine and you have something that you're not quite sure what to do, either ask for Stephanie or Kathy. We both work in the machine department. We'll be happy to help you in any way that we can. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and thanks for, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.